This is your Game of Thrones news update where I share with you what I consider to be the most important Game of Thrones filming news from about the past seven days. Warning, there are spoilers for the final season in this video, so if you're trying to stay spoiler free, please don't watch. Not surprising, with all the effort they put into making a kick-ass King's Landing set, they're still filming at that location in what should be the final month of filming. The most interesting news on the King's Landing set, to me, is our once red keep has had a color change and is now very white and lacks the Lannister banners. Which leads us to ask, why is it now white? Is this just the first coat? A primer? Will they add a different color? What if it's staying white? Could the person that takes King's Landing from Cersei do a Red Keep makeover? Or will this be a set for something else or some other location? Maybe they're trying to save money by reusing sets, but just painting them different colors. I'm leaning more towards it's still the Red Keep, but I'd love to hear your theories on why it's now white. Unless there was an update after I published this video actually telling us why they painted it white, then you're just a fucking cheater. I don't like you. Photos have also been put on the internet showing them moving bits and pieces of the King's Landing set around, and Irish Thrones took pictures of the aftermath props for King's Landing that is being stored across the street from the King's Landing set. And it looks really intense. Including what appears to be pieces of the Red Keep, which we'd expect to see taking a beating this season, especially if Cersei hides out there from attackers. But that isn't it for King's Landing. We've seen flames and smoke before on set throughout the past weeks, and we're seeing it again in a video posted on YouTube. This seems to be even more smoke than in previous leaks, though. So poor King's Landing is just having the shit burned out of it. But I guess that's what happens when you have multiple people with dragons that want you. And I talked about a news video or two ago how a dragon spine prop has been spotted in the area as well. So dragons are definitely going to be in the area and landing at King's Landing, which is also likely why we've seen more green screens popping up around the King's Landing set this past week. With all the leaks we've gotten so far, the King's Landing scenes are going to be so intense and so satisfying to watch. Except for seeing the small folk just getting burned alive. That's gonna be sad. Next, Lysanne's livery yard and riding stables, a location used for the Battle of the Bastards, posted on Instagram a picture of Dothraki at their location with the caption, What an exciting week we've had transforming the yard into a film set. Trying to explain to a Dothraki warrior that, even though the sun is blazing, Winter is here. It was then deleted, which hopefully doesn't mean HBO yelled at them. The post definitely points to them adding snow and other material to give the winter look, as they have for many of the Game of Thrones sets for filming the final season. Winter is here, and we're going to see a lot of it. Likely a battle scene or scenes with the Dothraki were filmed here. Speculation has been they are simply completing some shots for the huge battle at Winterfell that was mostly filmed some months ago. Poor Winterfell has to be super haunted by now with all those deaths. Moving on, Hannah Murray talked about her character Gilly, saying she believes Sam and Gilly have been relatively safe because they come from nothing. She said, I think there's something about them both coming from such a vulnerable place that no one's paying attention to them to ruin their lives. So they've been able to actually build a life and a family within all this chaos, and that's a very beautiful thing. Which sort of sounds like a clue to me that Gilly and Sam live to the end and have one of the happiest endings we could hope for in this show. But... Maybe I'm reading too much into that. Also in the final season, she said by no means is it a fairy tale happy ending. So yikes to the type of person that thought we were going to get a fairy tale happy ending to this series. I'd actually like to live in your head for a day and just see what it's like to be that optimistic. However, for those people that are all dark and gloomy and like to repeat that fucking quote from the show, if you thought this had a happy ending, you weren't paying attention, you're really fucking obnoxious, by the way. She also said that the final season is going to be pretty exciting, so that gives me a glimmer of hope that there's going to be a, a, a teeny bit of happiness. In kind of random news, Inside Paint Hall GOT-like locations gave us a peek at what they're building inside, and it looks massive. No real solid indication what the set is for, though it's being said it looks like the Red Keep and has a style similar to it. So perhaps they're shooting some inside scenes for the Red Keep, which 
if Danny's vision comes true, I can see the set being needed for that purpose because they're gonna destroy the shit out of it. And I really have to say with all these sets, I'm so impressed with everything HBO production is doing for this season. Normally actors are just regurgitating buzzwords like biggest season ever, but this is the first time I truly believe those words. Also in kind of random Game of Thrones news, Liana Mormont is back for the final season, which I don't know, that doesn't really surprise me. And we got confirmation from Jamie's actor that Jamie and Davos have at least one scene together, which I'm looking forward to. I don't know about you. By now you probably know HBO has officially ordered a pilot for a spinoff show of Game of Thrones, which I talked about in a previous video. If you're not up to date, here's a, a quick little summary of what it's going to be about. Set thousands of years before the events of Thrones, the project chronicles the world's descent from the Golden Age of Heroes into its darkest hour. Only one thing is for sure. From the horrifying secrets of Westeros' history to the true origin of the White Walkers, the mysteries of the East to the Starks of legend, it's not the story we think we know. The Age of Heroes and The Long Night are pretty exciting, so I'm all for it. And we actually got an update from George about this spinoff series and actually about other potential prequels. He said in his Not A Blog, Yes, this is a prequel, not a sequel. None of the characters or actors from Game of Thrones will appear in the new show. All of the successor shows we've been developing have been prequels, as I have mentioned before. This one really puts the pre in prequel. Since it is set not 90 years before, or Game of Thrones, like Dunkin' Egg, or a few hundred years, but rather 10,000 years. Well, assuming the oral histories of the First Men are accurate, but there are maesters at the Citadel who insist it's been only half that long. We're very early in the process, of course, with the pilot order just in, so we don't have a director yet, or a cast, or a location, or even a title. My vote would be The Long Night, which says it all, but I'd be surprised if that's where we end up. Most likely HBO will want to work the phrase Game of Thrones in there somewhere. We'll know sooner or later. I love that George is always taking pot shots at the Maesters, even though I guess technically he, he would be the Maesters. And for the record, I love the title, The Long Night. George also wanted to set the record straight for those thinking he's going to be a co-showrunner on this new prequel series. Writing, All of the news stories about the pilot being greenlit are slapping my own picture up there next to Jane's, which is very flattering, but also a little misleading. I've consulted with all the writers on all the successor shows, and several of them have visited me in Santa Fe for long days of discussion, and we've gone back and forth in email, text, and telephone so I've definitely been involved. But really, the accolades here should go to Jane. She has been an absolute thrill to work with, and my god, what a talent. George also gave those that are disappointed with the prequel they decided to go with some more hope. Even though HBO's programming president said we could get anywhere between zero and five spinoffs, George shed a little more light on what's currently going on with the prequels. He wrote, as for the other successor shows, if you've been following along, you know we started with four, and eventually went to five. One of those has been shelved, I'm given to understand, and of course Jane's pilot is now moving to film. But that does not mean the others are dead. Three more Game of Thrones prequels set in different periods and featuring different characters and storylines remain in active development. Everything I am told indicates that we could film at least one more pilot, and maybe more than one, in the years to come. We do have an entire world and tens of thousands of years of history to play with after all, but this is television, so nothing is certain. This actually gives me quite a bit more hope that we might see a prequel on Essos or maybe even the Faceless Men. Lastly, George wanted to assure fans that yes, he is still working on Winds of Winter and this prequel did not take him away from his work because I'm sure he could hear the bitching from a mile away. He wrote, and yes, before you ask, work on Winds of Winter continues and remains my top priority. It is ridiculous to think otherwise. If I wasn't busy with Winds, don't you think I'd be scripting one or more of these pilots myself? It's not as if I've never written for TV. So George is still being your slave, don't worry. If he steps out of line, there are plenty of places where we can buy pitchforks. Next, the Unmountains actor is still filming and recently posted a picture of himself between takes. That doesn't mean he lives or unlives to the end, but that perhaps his shots are the last they're doing before they finish filming this month. And I hope we're getting more Shadow Babies news, but I 
I know secretly that's ridiculous, a certain beach has been closed down for filming for the final season. This location has been used for scenes such as birthing a beautiful baby boy and Dragonstone Caves. The crazy part is HBO built a set at the cave entrance and I wish we could see the front of it. It is likely they are using the location for Dragonstone again, but it could be for any number of locations that a cave is needed with an additional set built at the mouth of it. Maybe it'll be used for Storm's End, and Gendry will have a moment there, says the naive person in me. Lastly, the Game of Thrones rap party happened, and we got the most adorable photos. Including Drogo's actor holding the man that totally banged his one-time wife. So that is your Game of Thrones news update. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and come back for more videos.